All right, let me show you how to add an activity indicator on this page. Now, because we're going to have multiple elements, we need to use one of the layouts. Stack layout, grid, absolute layout, or relative layout. In this case, I'm going to use absolute layout because I want to position the activity indicator right in the middle of the page. So, absolute layout. And here we add an activity indicator. Now this element has an attribute called is running, which is false by default. So if you want to see that, you have to set it to true. Now let's set the attached bindable properties. Absolute layout, that layout bounds. For the X and Y coordinates, I'm going to use proportional values. So 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And this will put the activity indicator right in the middle of the page. Now for the width and height, I'm going to use an absolute value. 100 by 100, and this is arbitrary. Now, absolute layout, the layout flags, position proportional. Now, if I run the application now, you're not going to see the activity indicator because the image here will be rendered on top of the activity indicator. So temporarily, I'm going to set is visible attribute of the image element to false. Let's look at the result. All right, here's our activity indicator, right in the middle. Let me zoom in so you can see more clearly. There you go. Now we can change the color of this activity indicator. So here I'm gonna set the background color of the page to black. And color of the activity indicator to white. And with this, our application will look like this. Now the final step. I want to show this activity indicator only when the image is loading. So instead of setting is running to true, I want to use a binding expression here. I want to bind is running attribute of activity indicator to is loading attribute of image. Let me show you what I mean. So remember binding expressions? It's a XAML markup extension, so always in curly braces. Binding. Now, Source. What is the source object? Again, we need to use another markup extension. That's X reference. You want to reference this image element here. So image. Now path should be is loading. So this is one of the properties of the image that is read only. When the image is being downloaded from the internet, is loading will be true. And when download is finished, it's going to be false. Now let me put this on a separate line so you can see clearly. There you go. So is running is set to a binding expression. Now finally, I'm going to remove is visible to false so we can see the image. Let's preview the result. Okay, here's our activity indicator. Okay, once the image is loaded, activity indicator disappeared. But how come our image is not filling the entire page? Because now we put it inside an absolute layout and we have not set its size. So we need to come back here, set absolute layout dot layout bounds. We want this image to take the entire screen. So for the position, I'm gonna put zero and zero. And for width and height, I'm gonna use one and one. And all these numbers are proportional values. So absolute layout, the layout flags, all. Now let's look at the result. Okay, here's the activity indicator. And finally, our background image. Beautiful. Now, downloading images is one way to add platform-independent images in your applications. It's useful if you want to build an app that lets the user browse some kind of photo gallery. Real-world example of this is Facebook app. On Facebook app, you can browse different photos. And as each photo is being downloaded, you see an activity indicator. But in this app you're building, the image we're using is supposed to be the background image of the app. It doesn't make sense to download it from the internet every time. So in the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to embed it in the portable class library.